Now there's not many stories in Irish folklore that are set around Christmas or around winter time. And that's because in Irish tradition, winter wasn't really a time for going out and doing things. Winter was more of a time for staying home and sleeping and staying warm and sleeping and eating far too much food and sleeping. But I do have a seasonally appropriate story. One that might caution you to be a little bit more careful when it comes to choosing your Christmas dinner. And many, many years ago in the town of Burr in County Offaly, there was an old grandmother and she had been desperately sick for weeks. She had been sick, so badly sick, completely bedridden the entire time. And one night it took her especially strongly. Her family was certain that tonight was the night, that this was it. So they sent her grandson out to fetch the priest to give her the last rites. And as he was running out the door, ready to run down the road and get the priest, what should he see? Just as he enters the garden. But the garden gates swing open. And in through it, trots a turkey without a head. And it starts scratching around in the dirt like a normal bird, even though it clearly was not a normal bird, it had no head. So, the young boy, he thinks to himself, now that's very odd. That's very odd. It's probably not very good. Ah, uh, but sure, who would I get to do something about it other than the priest? And I'm going to see the priest anyway, so I may as well get on, get on with it. So he runs down the road, he goes into the priest's house, he runs upstairs, and he says, Father, Father, come quickly, my granny, she's been sick for weeks we think tonight be, might be the night. We think she's about to die. Will you please come and give her the last rites? And the father, the priest, he says, of course, of course I'll come. Of course I can. So the two of them, they go downstairs. They get into the priest's little horse buggy and they ride down the road back to the young boy's home. And as they're in the horse buggy, making their way back to the house, the young boy, he turns to the priest and he said, father, I saw something very strange on my way here. The garden gate had swung open and through it came a turkey, but the turkey, it didn't have a head on it. And it was walking around as if it were alive, but it couldn't have been alive because it had no head. What do we do about it, Father? The priest, well, he doesn't acknowledge this at all. He doesn't even turn to look at the young boy. He just stares straight ahead with a look of steely determination. They arrive at the house shortly after. And that headless turkey, it's still scratching around in the dirt looking for worms and grain. And the boy, he points it out to the priest and he says, Look, father, it's still there, it's still there, what do we do? The priest, he says nothing. He just marches straight into the house, straight up the stairs. He performs the last rites for the grandmother. And then, and only then, he takes the young boy aside and he explains to him, This illness that's on your grandmother, it is no natural illness. That creature outside in the garden, I don't know whether it be fairy or demon, but that is what is causing your grandmother's illness. It is trying to steal her soul away. And the young boy, he started panicking. Oh no, oh no! Granny would be awful embarrassed if she had her soul turned stolen by a headless turkey. I'd get such a clip around the ear. What are we going to do? And listen, listen. The pair of us, we're going to go down there and we're going to sort it out. Don't you worry. So the two of them march downstairs. And the priest, he goes to his horse buggy and he fetches his whip. He marches straight up to the headless turkey in the garden. And he says, Creature, I demand you show me your true form. And the turkey, 
the headless turkey. It ruffles its feathers defiantly. The priest shouts a second time, Creature, I demand you show me your true form. And the headless turkey, in response, it gobbled ominously from the stump of its neck. And for a third time, the priest demanded, Creature, I command you to show me your true form. form and the shape of the turkey began to shimmer and melt and move and change and mold until standing before the priest there was a tall thin gaunt man with a wide brimmed hat and a long tattered coat and the priest looked at him and said you there take off that coat <laughs> I don't think you want me to be doing that, Father. It would end very badly for you. The priest was out of patience. He took his whip and he started lashing the man, demanding over and over again that he remove the coat. Eventually he stood up. He started unbuttoning his coat and he spread it open wide and slow. And they did not see a shirt underneath, nor a jumper, nor a waistcoat, nor a stitch of clothing, nor even bare flesh. Instead, they saw rippling golden flames, bubbling pools of lava and scores of sinners being punished by demons of the pit. The priest was taken aback at first by this glimpse into hell itself. But he regained his composure. He steeled himself with his faith. And he lashed at the man commanding him to leave that place and never return. And so, Beginning with his hands, and his head, and his feet, the man began to collapse into that window, into hell, collapsing into his own coat, folding in on himself and disappearing in a puff of smoke. But the grandmother, she recovered in only a few hours, almost immediately returned to perfect health. Priest. Ah well, he was dead within a week. No mortal was made to look upon hell itself and come away unscathed. So perhaps now, hearing that, when you are selecting your Christmas turkey, you'll make sure not only that it's ethically sourced, but also non-demonically sourced. Merry Christmas.